Hey guys, CT Stealth here, and if you remember in my last video, what we did is we used the connection editor in order to rotate this, so that when I rotate along the z-axis of the attributes over here, you'll notice that this object will also uh, rotate along the pivot point in which we set. So, what I need to do now is I need to slowly begin connecting these pieces, and I'm going to introduce the uh, how to utilize these other constraints I showed you a little bit earlier. So, now that I've moved the pivot point, your first reaction is probably like, well, if I've already moved it here, how can I get this to, to get to be connected to this? Well, we need to be very specific in how we connect this, because if we connect it to, like, a just let's just say it's a little bit off, it's going to rotate weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here, and we're going to go to Create, and then a Locator. And we're going to accomplish this by snapping the pivot points to these so-called locators. All they are is just a point in space. They have, they'll never be rendered and they'll never interfere anything in your uh, the animator or it's kinda like a bone, you know, like the animators doesn't move bones, they actually move the attributes that will move the bones. So that so this is something that the animator will never see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna place it right here where we want the connection to take place. So over here, kind of zoom in a little bit, and I want it to be roughly in the center of this pole. Now it doesn't really have to be perfect. I don't have to like come in here and make sure it's down to the exact degree. I just have to make sure that it is definitely within the center of this object on a rough scale, and the center of the object of uh, this, this cylinder here, pole type thing. So I'm going to use the locator's little arrows that kind of extrude out to kind of judge where that's at. So that's probably a good spot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at my main axle, which is the group for this uh, object, and I'm going to place the locator uh, by uh, clicking on it and middle mouse clicking and dragging to the main axle. So it's getting parented under here. So now as I uh, rotate this uh, the locator goes with it. So now that that's done, we need to select this object here, and we'll notice that the uh, pivot point is located in the middle of the object. So I'm going to press insert to be able to move the pivot point, and I'm going to snap it to the locator. So I'll kind of roughly snap it, and I'll zoom in, and I will press, uh, I'll go to wireframe mode, is four, and I will. Now this is kind of hard to fo follow, so you probably won't see this in YouTube. But basically, what I'm doing is I'm looking for where the you where the locator is lying, which it looks like it's about right here. So I find my point, hold down the V key, and snap it to the locator. So it is exactly on the locator. Now, like I said, it's really hard to see, and it's even more harder to see when you're actually doing this on your own. So you, you need to kind of try to be aware of these uh, green lines here that the locator is showing off. They're kind of dark green, and they blend. They can blend within the wireframe very easily if you have lots of mesh. So I'll go back to this, and uh, it's definitely snapped to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to come back over here to this controller that I created. Now I want to be able to have it rotate, but I want to be able to see it, so I don't have to keep like coming back over here to rotate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten my frame scale to 24, which is located right here. I'm changing these to 24, so I now have 24 frames per second. Then I'm going to go to the Rotate Z, uh, press the S key to uh, keyframe it. Then I'm going to go to frame 24, rotate it by 360 degrees, and press the S key again. Now, doing so will allow me to uh, just press play, and I can see how this is going to rotate. So I can just just press play, and I, I don't have to keep coming over here to change that. Now, when I create my when I'm going to give this off to the next animator, I'm going to delete that keyframe because that is only for my benefit, not for the animators, and they don't want to see that. So, 
Now that uh, I'll press play so I can see that the uh, locator is definitely following the mesh that is rotating. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the pole. Now remember what I was saying, the last thing selected is the thing that's going to be constrained. So actually I need to select the locator first and then the pole second. Then I'm going to go make sure I'm in my animation menu set, go to constrain and point. Now um, when I did it like this, you'll have to note that this time I, I did a point constraint to the locator and sometimes if the pivot point is off slightly you'll notice that this mesh will tweak just just a tiny bit you'll just notice a slight little just move and that means the pivot points is most likely off and you should revert your edit and redo that so now I'll press uh, play and you'll see that the object goes with it um, why is it not rotating uh, well first of all I don't want it to rotate around here um, but it's not rotating because it's not parented in the object the point itself is creating like a pivot point in mid space so that the actual pivot point which we snap to the locator is completely isolated from the rotation values of this main axle group so because of that it doesn't rotate now I'm coming back over here now how would I get this I want this to do the exact same thing as this so like it's still gonna move like in this it's just you know the actual pole is not rotating so how would I get this over here to be connected well if you think about it why, why don't I just do the same thing well I did before well I've already moved the pivot point so if I move the pivot point moving the pivot point is just gonna change the point constraint so I can actually kinda kind of show you but I'll just move the pivot point and just move it up and you'll notice that the entire object is actually doing something weird and uh, so I can't actually use that to make sure it stays straight so how would I fix that well we have another constraint which we can use is called the aim constraint which I demonstrated earlier and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another locator lift it up and I'm going to place it right here where these two objects pieces meet kind of get it right in there all right now this time I'm going to select this pole and I'm going to make sure this locator is parented to this pole so that it moves with the object um, actually I'm going to redo that I messed up that's not the wrong that's the wrong one ignore that I actually need to parent it to this one because I need the locator actually to stay in place and I need everything else to rotate around it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mid one looks like is what it's called and middle mouse drag to mid one here so that it is uh, um, parented to that yes. okay so now, I'm going to select the locator, select the pole, make sure I'm in my animation menu set, go to constrain, aim, and you'll notice this. Not that window, but this pole is now going this random direction. Well, like I said before, you need to make sure that the aim vectors are pointed in the right direction. So I need to come to the attribute tab, click on the tab here and change these aim vectors until it works. Um, I'm pretty much out of time so I'm going to move on to the next video. See you in a minute.